How you doing guys? Big Mac Dan School here again today, back once again with another Conquest video for you. Today, I'm going to be playing through Tutorial Mission 6. Secure the Jeep Seat. So, as you may gather from the name of this particular mission, um, it's all about securing the Gene Seed. Now, Gene Seed, if you don't know, um, is basically extra organs that they give to space marines, extra um, extra things that they use to grow space marines. And the Death Guard don't have an endless supply of gene seed and neither do uh, loyal space marine chapters, I was going to say legions, uh, neither do loyal space marine chapters. And so gene seed is harvested from fallen warriors of the Imperial Fists, of the Ultramarines, of any space marine chapter. Um, so the Imperial Fist can't allow it to fall into Death Guard hands. And that's what this mission's all about. It's about recovering some gene seed that's been left behind on the battlefield. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's crack on with the mission. As you can see in front of you, we have two forces arrayed. On this side, we have the Space Marines. It is Lieutenant Gideon and three Space Marine Primaris Reavers. Um, We've got the dash tray in the middle here. Over to the Death Guard side, we have a squad of six Pox Walkers, and we have five Plague Marines with a Plague Champion here. Um, looking at the battlefield, you know, it says 50p in the middle there. That's going to be the Gene Seed objective marker. So it's halfway between the two deployment zones, and um, whoever gets that back to their deployment zone in the in five turns allocated uh, will win the day and will win the battle so um, let's roll off to see who deploys first or who chooses to deploy first uh, the space marines are the white dice and they will choose to deploy first or they will choose who deploys first uh, is there any benefit to see yeah the space marines will deploy second so the death guard will deploy first or come back after deployment so as you can see, both sides are now deployed. Uh, the Poxwalkers deployed in the middle. I think what I'm going to do with them is try and move them up the battlefield as far as possible in that first turn. If they can get to the objective marker and prevent the Space Marines from getting it, then uh, they'll do so. The Space Marines, however, will take the first turn. What's more than likely going to happen is Lieutenant Gideon is going to run up there and get the objective marker before the Pox Walkers can. Uh, so let's see how it goes. A couple of things to note. There are a few extra rules in this tutorial mission. Uh, and that is that you can fall back from combat now. And the Space Marines have a rule called Codex Discipline. Meaning in a turn that they fall back from combat, they can still shoot. But they will hit on a 4+, plus instead of a 3+. plus. Um, this benefits you because if you want to get onto the objective marker or something, you can fall back out of a combat, you're not tied up in combat, and you can claim the objective marker. Um, so yeah, the Space Marines will hit on a 4+, plus in a turn they fall back. The Death Guard, though, they get inexorable advance, which means uh, it gives them an extra 6 inches on their rap rapid-fire weapons, so that's the plasma guns and the bolt rifles. And... Um, what else is it? It's the plasma gun gets a slight update as well. The it wounds on a two plus, enemies save on a six plus, and it explodes on a one. Uh, it's still a rapid fire weapon, and yeah, that's uh, the rules updates for you. And we'll crack on with the first turn. I'll come back after space marine movement. So as you can see, after the space marine movement, the reavers are now on the objective marker claiming it. Um, I tried to advance with Lieutenant Gideon. But unfortunately, he only got a one-inch advance roll, so uh, I decided to move him up there, leaving the way three, free for the Reavers to get through. They got four inches to their advance and moved straight onto that objective marker, protecting it from the Death Guard. Um, we'll come back after Death Guard movement. So, coming back after Death Guard movement, you can see that the Plague Marines have moved up the battlefield towards the Reavers now, as have the Poxwalkers. Uh, the Plague Marines are going to start opening fire now on those Reavers. Let's start with the bolt runs. They're going to get four shots because they're well within rapid fire range. They are going to hit on. Um, move these dice out of the way. They're going to hit on threes. That is uh, three hits. They are going to wound on fours. That is two wounds. 
try and get so you can see that there we go um, two wounds as you can see from the five and six and uh, that's two saves for the Reavers three up saves both made uh, so no damage done there now it's on to Repugnus with his plasma gun uh, should he use that now let's move on to the black launchers first and then I'll decide whether or not to shoot with the plasma gun. Uh, so the black launchers are going to get two shots each. And they are going to hit also on threes. That is one miss. They are going to wound. On fours. That is two wounds. So it's two five up saves that the Reavers have to make from them black launcher hits. And they both fail. So that means we get to remove a Reaver from play. Uh, the Space Marine player, of course, chooses who gets removed from play. So I'll take this one off the top of the barrel there. And now, will Repugna shoot or will it just charge in? Or will the Poxwalkers indeed charge in? I think Repugna is going to take his chances with his plasma gun. This could go disastrously wrong. Anything but a one. Uh, two shots here. Hitting, <laughs> hitting on threes. Oh, there's a one there, so Repugnus is taken out of action. But there's also a six, which means, handily, uh, he does get a shot away there. It's going to wound on twos. It wounds. It's going to be a six up save with the new rules. It's going to be a six up save for the plasma gun. It's a five, so it's failed to save there. And that means there's another wound on a space marine there. So, ooh, who should I put it on? The one that's got the marker or the sergeant. I guess I'd have to put it on the sergeant there realistically, wouldn't I? Mm, yep, I think put it on the sergeant. Um, so now the charge is going to come, first of all, from the poxwalkers. The poxwalkers are going to charge. It's around about a three inch charge, but let's just measure that out for you. Yeah, it's a three inch charge, just over three inches there, but three inches will get them within one inch. Uh, it's going to be two overwatch shots from the Reavers, hitting on sixes. Nope, no hits. So, three inch charge for the Poxwalkers. They make that with ease. Uh, so the first one gets in there. And then the Plague Marines are going to charge in as well. Uh, they've got... The same distance to charge, they're a little bit closer, but it's still a three inch charge at least. Of course, the Reavers can't now fire any overwatch. 12 inches there on the charge distance. Um, so that's again with ease the Plague Marines get in. Let's just uh, move them up into combat there. Oh, Repugnus is dead, of course. Uh, so let's take him out before we forget that. He died after that plasma. Overwatch, uh, not the plasma overwatch, plasma exploded. Um, so I'll come back with some dice rolling in the combat phase for you. So the Pox Walkers will get two attacks each in combat. They are going to get 12 attacks in total and they're going to hit on fives. Oh my word, there's a lot of sixes there. Uh, let's take out any misses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's five hits. And they're going to wound on fives as well. Let's see if they can do the same with all of those nasty, nasty attacks. No wounds. Okay, that was uneventful in the end. And now it's up to the Plague Marines. They will attack. Only two of them can attack, just these front two, I'd say. So, uh, the others aren't in range. So, I'm going to hit on threes here. Two hits. Wounding on fours. One wound, and it's a three up save for the Space Marines. Failed it! So that is the Sergeant taken out of action there. Meaning that the Reaver there is left alone in that combat. He'll get three attacks back though. He's going to put them all into. Hmm, should he put them into the Pox Walkers? Or should he put them into the Plague Marines? He's going to put them all into the Poxwalkers. He's going to hit on threes. Oh, one miss. He's going to wound on uh, threes. Two wounds. It's two disgusting and resilience now from the Poxwalkers. 
Oh, they make them both. So there's no dead Poxwalkers there. And there's an end of turn piling move now, meaning the Poxwalkers will wrap right around him there. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens in the next Space Marine turn. So that's uh, the little bit of movement from the Space Marines. The Lieutenant, Lieutenant Gideon's moved from there to here. Um, he can't do anything in the shooting phase, but the Reaver, of course, can shoot with his pistol. So the Reaver is going to take a shot into the Poxwalkers, hitting on threes. Fails to hit anyway. Um, and that means that's the end of that part of the turn. So Lieutenant Calcius is just going to charge into the Plague Marines here. Uh, he can't actually fail this charge. There's no overwatch going on. Um, so he's just going to charge in there. I decided to charge him in on this side to try and cut through those Plague Marines if possible because his power sword, of course, you need to roll a six up save instead of the standard three up save that the Plague Marines uh, get. So it's on to the combat phase of Space Marine turn two now. And of course, because uh, Gideon charged in this turn, he gets to attack first. He gets four attacks in total and he's going to be hitting on twos. He gets four hits. He's going to be wounded on fives and re-rolling twos because of his, or re-rolling re -rolling ones rather, because of his special lieutenant's rule. Uh, he is wounded on fives, I said, didn't I? So he gets no wounds there. Absolute disastrous roll in there from Lieutenant Gideon. Uh, but now it's on to the Reavers, or the Reaver rather. He's going to get three attacks into the Poxwalkers again. He's going to hit on threes. One miss, he's going to wound on threes, re-rolling ones. He gets two wounds there, and it's two disgusting resilience from the Poxwalkers now. Uh, both failed, so that is two dead Poxwalkers. Uh, me being the Death Guard player though, I'll take these two out, so he has to, he can't just fall back out of that combat just yet. And uh, we'll move on to Death Guard attacking back. Um, I, I was almost said Death Guard turn 2 then, I was going to scrap their attack phase here, but I will not because I'm not that forgetful. 8 attacks from the Poxwalkers, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 attacks from the Poxwalkers, hitting on 5s. Oh, a number of 5s and 6s again. That is 5 hits, they're going to wound on 5s as well. Ooh, that is four wounds this time. So it's four three-up saves from the Reaver. He's failed one, so he's taken a wound there. Let's pop that marker in. Um, I'll leave that marker there. Um, and the Death Guard will attack back. Hitting on threes for the Death Guard Plague Marines. Uh, I'm just going to move one round there. Would they have piled in? No, I don't know. Uh, I'm just I'm just going to have two attacks again, hitting on hitting on threes. Uh, two hits, and they're going to be wounding on fours. One wound, and it's a three up save for the Reaver. He makes it. So this combat continues into Death Guard. Turn 2. Just before I go to Death Guard turn 2 though, um, I will actually attack with this Plague Marine as well into Calcius. Completely forgot about that. He can reach Calcius there. So he's going to get one attack and he's going to hit on threes. He misses anyway. Uh, so on to Death Guard turn 2 now. I'll do some piling moves and then come back after that. So it's now Death Guard turn 2, and uh, yeah, we're back into the combat phase. Um, I'm going to attack with the Plague Marines first, because everybody has, um, everybody's already in combat. Um, so I'm attacking with the Plague Marines first in the hope of taking out this guy before he can do any further damage to the Death Guard forces. Um, so, these two uh, will attack, make their attacks hitting on threes. And wounding on fours. That is one wound. And it's a three up save. Oh, he's failed his save. So, no further action required from 
uh, any Death Guard Plague Marines there. Um, so it's just up to this guy now attacking Calcius. He's going to hit on threes. He hits. He's going to wound on fours. He fails to wound. Um, so now the Death Guard will consolidate. Um, I don't know whether to consolidate with the Death Guard. Well, I guess the Death Guard. The Death Guard Plague Marines will pile in. Um, and then these guys will consolidate onto that. If I'm doing any of this wrong, by the way, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, so now Calcius will attack back. And he's got four attacks. He's hitting on threes. Twos, rather. Uh, all hit. He's going to wound on fives. One wound. And it's a six-up save for the Death Guard. Failed, but he gets a disgustingly resilient. Fails it. So there is a dead Death Guard Plague Marine. Uh, I'll take this guy out of action. Okay, it's on to Imperial Fist turn three now. I'll come back after... Um, well, I might as well just go straight onto Imperial Fist turn three, I guess. So Gideon is going to stay in combat with the Plague Marines. Uh, he's going to shoot with his pistol first of all. He's going to hit on threes. He's going to wound on fives. Fails to wound. So we go straight onto his attacks. He's going to hit on twos. And he hits with all of them. He's going to wound on fives. No wounds, but there is a re-roll there because he's, uh, he re-rolls his ones on the wounding roll. So, no wounds there at all. Uh, the Death Guard will now attack him back. Uh, so, it's going to be one, two. Oh, it's going to be two attacks with normal weapons for the Death Guard hitting on. Hitting on threes. One hit. Uh, he's going to wound on fours. Wounds. And it's a three up save for Calcius. Uh, Gideon. Fails a save, so he's down to three wounds now. Just put that wound marker there for him. And the uh, guy with the power fist now is going to attack. He's hitting on fours. Oh, he's... Yeah, there is a guy with the power fist there, but it's not repugnous. Uh, yeah, he's hitting on fours, so he just gets one attack. And he's wounding on twos. Wounds. Um, now, that attack causes D3 damage. There's no saving throw for a Space Marine against a Power Fist attack. Um, so we just roll for damage now. It's D3 damage for a Power Fist. If it's a 6, a 5 or a 6, that means that Calcius is dead. It's a 1, so it's only 1 damage. So he's down to, uh, down to 2 wounds now, Calcius. Um, and we'll move on to Death Guard turn 3 next. So after the movement phase of Death Guard turn 3, we can see the Poxwalkers have advanced here. They only got an advance roll of 2 though, so they didn't get right back to their deployment with that valuable Imperial Fish Gene Seed. Um, let's move on to the shooting phase. Uh, there's no shooting from the Death Guard because they don't have pistols. So straight into the combat phase now. We're going to attack with the Plague Marines, funnily enough. Uh, so we're going to get the 2 attacks from the standard Plague Marines first, and they're going to hit on 3s. They both hit. They're going to wound on fours. They one of them wounds. Uh, it's a three up save for Calcius. Gideon rather he makes that save. Um, and then it's onto the power fist. He's hitting on fours. He fails to hit. So Gideon is going to attack back now. He gets four attacks, and he's going to hit on twos. Oh, misses with one of them. He's going to wound on fours. He fails to wound with all of them. Uh, it would have been fives to wound rather, not fours. Um, but yeah, he fails to wound with all of them anyway. Um, so it's straight on to the Imperial Fist turn four now. Shooting phase. And Gideon is going to shoot with his pistol. He's going to hit on threes. He misses. He's going to go straight into his attacks. He's going to hit on twos. Oh, two misses. He's going to wound. On fives, fails to wound, but there is a reroll there for that one. He wounds finally. It's a six up save for the Death Guard. Uh, fails a save, so disgustingly resilient. Fails a disgustingly resilient, so that is another dead Death Guard unit. 
Uh, I'll take out this fella here, the other bolt gun guy. So now it's time for the Death Guard to return the favour and get some attacks back. We'll roll for the guy without the power fist first. He's going to be hitting on threes. He fails to hit, and the guy with the power fist hitting on fours. He fails to hit as well. So uneventful for the Death Guard there. We're going to move on to Death Guard turn four now. And, uh, oh, I wonder what's going to happen here. We'll see. I'll come back after movement. So this is it, Death Guard turn 4 and the Poxwalkers have made it back to their deployment zone with that valuable Imperial Fish Gene Seed, meaning they have won the game. Uh, the Death Guard have won this in 4 turns. Calcius fought valiantly but uselessly quite frankly, his inability to wound is frustrating at times. Uh, the Reavers just got absolutely wiped out near the start there, um, but I'll go back to myself talking to the camera for you now. Disastrous mission there for the Imperial Fist. They lost that valuable gene seed to some lowly, lowly pox walkers scooting off the battlefield with it there. Um, yeah, I made, it, I made some mistakes as the Imperial Fist player, I think. Some big tactical errors. What I should have done with Lieutenant Gideon was send him into the pox walkers, hopefully slaying the pox walkers and not allowing them to run off with that gene seed. He could have then consolidated onto the gene seed himself and uh, run away from the... Death Guard Plague Marines that were there. Um, but, you know, you live and learn. Um, as the Imperial Fist player there, I sort of failed. I think I, the next mission, I need to think a bit more as the Imperial Fist player. I tried to think tactically, as tactically as possible. That's why I sent him into the Plague Marines, because I thought he's going to chop through these Plague Marines and then he can deal with the Pox Walkers. But I should have really prioritised the Pox Walkers as the target there, because... Um, obviously they were the ones with the gene seed. If the Poxwalkers got out of combat and wandered off, then Gideon wasn't going to be able to do much about stopping them, preventing them getting that gene seed away from the Plague Marines. Um, if he'd fallen back out of combat with the... with the Plague Marines, then he couldn't have really done much else uh, because he all he could have done was fired his pistol and shot into the pox walkers but he could have taken out a maximum of one pox walker it, because the controlling player the player who controls the models removes whichever model they see fit it's um it's they're not likely to and i wouldn't have as the controlling player for the pox walkers uh, for the death guard i wouldn't have removed the model that was holding the gene seed so um, yeah, as soon as I went into the Plague Marines, basically, it was a no-win situation, no-win scenario from then on. Um, after the Reavers failed to deal with the Poxwalkers, they were massively outclassed in that combat, and once, especially once the Plague Marines got involved and just started taking a heavy toll on those Reavers, so the Reavers were made short work of, at the end of the day, by the joint Death Guard forces. Uh, yeah, so that's it, that's another mission down. Um, Replay, uh, not replay mission six, that was mission six. Uh, tutorial mission seven next week involves some psychic powers. A librarian joins the battle for the Space Marine forces. Come back next week for another tutorial mission, and uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on with that one. Don't forget, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so by checking out the link in the description below to my Patreon account. Um, at the minute, that money is going majority of it is going into uh, Mortal Realms content and making sure I can pick up Mortal Realms on a bi-weekly, not a bi-weekly basis, does that mean twice a week? Every two weeks on a fortnightly basis um, because at the minute it's only coming out fortnightly um, and future funds on my Patreon will go to support the channel in terms of increasing production values and stuff like that. Stay tuned for more content. Come back next week for another tutorial mission and check out my old videos on Tuesday if you like. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the battlefield.